Hello guys, welcome to Solving Solutions, your number one channel where you get solutions to all your solving problems. It's nice having you in class again today. How have you been? And again, we need to say Happy New Year because um, it's still um, a new year. And um, how was your holidays? Are you still on holidays or you've resumed work and school? All right. Um, thanks for always um, checking up on us because um, we know that you are always there. Now, on today's video, we are going to show you something, something interesting. Yeah, we are going to show you how to move any shape file, yeah, shape files to Google it. You know, Google it is more like our data model, right? Where you can you visualize almost anything you are working with. So let's say you have a shape file and then you want to actually work with it and you want to also check how it is placed on Google it. So this video will, and again, if you still have any other reason why you need to bring in shape file to Google it, this video will help you. So um, on the description section, you would see how to download, you see links to videos where we would show you or we have actually shown you, perhaps you've not seen it, where we've actually described or we've made a video on how to download chip files and then you can assess those videos and see how those videos are. Now let's start this video. The first thing now is that you would have actually gotten your chip file. So that's why you need to see how to download chip file or you would have actually designed or maybe maybe if you've not downloaded it from where you download it, maybe you've actually gotten it, you've created it yourself. So you come to file and then you go to what import, right? Good. Good. So when you are now on this um, open dialog box, like um, this dialog box that is described as open, you now go to the folder where you would have saved your ship file, maybe where you downloaded it or where you actually created it. So you can see there are different file types as by default is under the generic where you can use a um, text or maybe CSV. However, what we need is what the S3 um, shape file, right? Good. So you can see other file extensions or maybe file types that you can um, import to what to Google it. So we need this um, ESL shape file. So you can now see that upon saving it to saving the file type to ESL shape file, we have now seen the shape file that is on the folder that we are working with, right? Good. So we just click on it and uh, we open it. Now, upon opening it, the Google Ad is now asking us, do we want to apply style template to the features we have ingested? Yes. Good. Now, we are going to bring in two shape files on this video. The essence of doing that, we are going to tell you towards the end of importing the other shape file. Good. So, we want to set this um, style template. The the name the name here indicates okay how do you want the shape file to be described on google it so instead of using no field let's use a um, name underscore one because that is actually the field that describes the particular shape file we are trying to bring in then the color the single color let's use something like red right good then the height we are not going to make any modifications here so we say the name, we've used this um, name underscore one, this field, we've used this field, then the color, we've used red, and then you can see now that this icon is not um, highlighted. The other data we are going to bring in, you will see it highlighted and then you know what next to do with it. So I think we are done with this particular data, so you just click on what, okay. So upon making those um, settings or maybe upon effecting those other changes you want to um, on your template you will be prompted to save it so we are not saving it on the default folder we are saving it on a specific folder we want to save it and then you can see that um, the the file type is um, google it, um, style template right good dot um, kst so we are saving it on this folder we are working on so let's just call this um, fct boundary underscore let's just call this template right good so we are now going to save it so upon saving it you will now see that the 
the file has been under your places and the Google Earth is now navigating towards what the location of that particular shape file. So you see now it has gotten there, but you've not seen the boundary because it is still off. So you come to this your box and then you want to check it on. Are we together? So you maybe put it on or put it off. So now it is on. You can now see that the shape file has been imported to what to Google Earth. So by being yeah, you will be able to know if it's actually on the location you want it to be. Maybe you know if there are a little bit of differences or maybe a little bit of disparity, whatever the case is, you will be able to know. And you can now see the other descriptions that are on the word that are with the shape file. You can now see the other descriptions. So most of these um, descriptions are under the attribute, um, would I say attribute table, right? Good. Most of these um, descriptions are under the attribute table of the shape file. So this is one of the data we have imported, one of the shape files we have imported to, um, to Google it. Now we are going to import another data to Google it. So remember the process is what we go to files, right? Then import, right? Good. So this is the second data we are going to import, the second shape file, which is this, right? So we do what? We open. Then it prompts us again. Do we want to apply style template? Yes. Good. Now, at this point, the essence of um, bringing in this second data will actually be explained now. You know, this particular data has, um, let's say, um, how, how do we explain this? It has many attributes compared to the first one that's number one that's one difference and then this particular shape file is more like being depicted in points not boundaries so as it is being depicted in points you can be able to have modifications for each of the points are we together so let's say per adventure this boundary which is the first one we have imported they are not the same they are not on the same um, location but let's say while you are working, you've actually imported the boundary. You can actually also import what those um, random points or maybe the other validation points within the boundary, just um, like a like a shape file, which we have actually done on this um, second um, shape file. Are we together? So now the next part of it is that the name. The name we are going to use the altitude, so it might just um, be displayed like um, sport tights, right? Then let's still change the color to, um, let's use, okay, I still prefer red. No, let's use, um, okay, let's use yellow. Okay, let's use green. Good, let's use green. So, okay. Then now the icon. This icon, you know, the last time while we are bringing in the boundary, this icon was not highlighted because it was more like um, a polygon. But now this is being depicted in points. Are we together? So this icon will now come up like the call out. Should we call it call out? It will just be like the beacon that represents each of those points, right? So let's use this. Should we know? Let's use, okay, let's use this. Then the height, we don't do much there. So the most important thing now, or let's say the difference, let me just use that. The difference here was the icon. And the icon is just used to what? To help you. Um, call out or let's say ring or let's say I light those um, different points that you brought in that are within what your shape file right good so okay the color is green the name is there then we say what we say okay then it will still prompt us save the what the template and we are not saving it on the default um, folder so let's still call this um, data underscore two underscore template right so we say what okay now it will navigate to the location where the shape file will fit in right good so by default we still have to put layer on to see how they appear so now you can see now that this was actually when we were trying to move from google Earth to i think so far or so the link to that video will still be on the description section you will see how we got these points because we still moved these points from Google Earth to Sofa, right? I think while we are trying to get them or something. So you will still see the link to those videos or to that video on the description section. So you can now see 
the first ship file we brought in which is this fct boundary it was a boundary now these data are more like points and you see how these points are so we can still open it you can still extend you now see the what the separate or the individual point so you can decide to put them on put them off as the case may be you can decide to even change what okay you can decide to ring them like call them out you can also decide to come to properties and you do what you change the icon as this icon is now we can decide to change it to something else something completely different from what we have done so you can use that to identify okay this is a particular point i should come back to very soon so by maybe changing that um, icon or the the pin or the place mark whatever i want to call it you have made it distinct you can now see now this particular point was changed so this can serve as your boundary or whatever the case is so the most important thing is that you have been able to see or you have seen how to import what chip files to google it so the applications are enormous the applications are very vast depending on what you want to achieve depending on what you want to do you can actually do so many things as we have what as we have described so now you know when you click on each of those points you will see the other attributes what of the points as you have seen on the screen now right good so thanks for coming to class we hope we've provided solution to this particular solving problem and um, when you have or if you have any issue related to this and you would need us to help you or to assist you don't forget to contact us our contact details are on the channel description and we are going to add it to the description section of this video so we are going to see you on our next video until then Keep being good at what you're doing and have a nice time. Happy New Year. Bye.